coming to you again with another special and today is going to be about what to expect as an undrafted free agent trying to make it into the NFL. So I have some questions here that I came up with for my baby daddy. <laughs> but um, we also pulled three questions from followers on Instagram who we're going to shout out at the end. So Be ready. Be ready. Oh, and by the way, for y'all that don't know, my baby, she is a sports reporter. And that'll be another video for another time. But she is a sports reporter. This is what she do for real. This is what she do on a daily basis. So this is going to be interesting. I'm ready. Let's get it. Okay, so first I just want you to introduce yourself, um, your name, team, and your position. My name is Jeremy Cox, and I play running back, and I currently play for the Denver Broncos. Okay. What is one of the major differences between a player in the NFL that is drafted versus a player that goes undrafted? A player that's drafted, I'm, they're, they're loved. Like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's basically, I mean, it's pretty much like college all over again. Um... Everybody comes in as a rookie, but the difference is the contracts and the type of love. Like, people still know you, but also, you know, the guys that get drafted, you know, they get chose to go to, you know, these these big events, or that's who the media wants to talk to. That's what the people want to talk to. And, like, the guys that, you know, get in there, we're grateful and everything. But, I mean, you can definitely see there's a difference from getting drafted and just being the person who signed. Right. So that actually goes into my next question, which mm -hmm. is have you personally experienced or witnessed any difference between the two? Mm, I would say yes. I feel, I feel as if uh, the accountability part, um, as far as being drafted and not being drafted, I feel like, you know, the coaches hold players differently. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it should be the same given to each player uh, that's, you know, trying to get on the roster. Um, but personally, uh, you just see it. It's not like anything, you know, in the known, but you see it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what is your mindset about the upcoming season knowing that you have to secure your spot on the roster? Oh man, my mindset is literally going in. It's not about making a 53-man roster this time. I'm trying to make the 46-man roster because as players we all say that. And when you think about the 53-man roster, 10 of those, was it 10 or 8? Eight, 8 of those guys don't dress out. Mm -hmm. They're just there. And... Um, this time going into the season, um, I'm focused on one thing, and that's making the team. That's it. Literally, that's it. I'm just focused on making a team. Okay. What helps you stay motivated, especially during this time during a pandemic? My kids, my boys. My boys, uh, they, man, they're the world to me. Um, um, just during this time, it's a, it's a lot going on out there in the world. The pandemic, uh, the deaths, um, business closing, people losing their jobs. And what's helping me to keep a same mind is Legacy and Hezekiah. And seeing them guys wake up each day and knowing that um, whether I have football or not, football is not, you know, my number one job, being the father first, and making sure those guys eat, smile, laugh, play, and have fun. What are some key techniques or habits that would help an undrafted free agent once he gets to the facility? First, I would say get his, uh, ask, ask the veterans who's been there for a very long time, get into their mind, ask them, hey, uh, what can help me with this? Uh, what should I be doing? 
differently? What did you do? What helped you? Uh, what helped you uh, learn as much as you did? What helped you play the way you do? I would also say, um, when you go in there, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be nervous. Don't be afraid to expose yourself of not knowing anything. And if you want to know, ask that question. It's imperative because when you get cut, it's not a good feeling. So ask as many questions as you can. Be in the know and stay in your playbook. Please, it's vital that you stay in your playbook. You live in your playbook day and night. <laughs> All right, so describe the emotions you experienced getting cut from a team. Oh, wow, I didn't even know that was the next question. <laughs> Man, that that day hurt. Just like, guys, when I tell y'all, like a lot of people don't know my story, but basically that I was literally the last person to get cut. So basically I was like, I was lukewarm, like of making the practice squad. Not making the roster, but making the practice squad. And I think it, I think you only can have twelve on a practice squad, and it was me and this other linebacker. Well, I play running back, but it was me and the linebacker, and uh, it was twelve of us. And my phone blown off the line, it's ringing, and um, people just asking me, "What you gonna do, Jay Cox? You know what I'm saying? What's going on? You gonna make the team or whatnot?" And I'm just like, "Bro, why are they doing this? Like, I'm I'm nervous. Like, you know what I'm saying? Really don't know what's going on." And um, we stay in this room for about 40, 45 minutes, just sitting there, just talking of the similar situations as far as what's going on. And um, about, you know, maybe five, ten more minutes go by. And they call me, and uh, they tell me to grab my iPad. And I go into the office with uh, the GM, and basically just like, hey, Jeremy, you know, we appreciate you. Uh, at this time, unfortunately, you know, we decided to go a different route. And um, we think you're very good. And, you know, hopefully, you know, another team calls you, blase, blase, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, literally when I walked out that office, like I was the last guy to get cut. And, you know, I almost had the opportunity of making it or making a practice squad to be on the uh, active roster. Um I've been doing this my entire life. I've literally been doing this my entire life since I was five. Been playing running back since I was five. I've never changed my position. Play defense sometimes growing up, but it's always been running back. And I'm just like, and at the time, I also had a broke rib. So, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I had my little baby. I had legacy. And I'm just like, just getting cut. And you know, having to pack your stuff up and go back home, I was embarrassed. Um, and I know I'm talented, but uh, I never, that, that feeling is just crushing. Something that you do, something that you're good at, something that, you know, that you have a, like, real passion about. Like, I've been, like, just imagine yourself doing something your entire life, and then it's kind of like a slap in the face of my telling you, like, you're not good enough. And you know inside your heart, what you can really do. So I just, I'm never, I'm, I'm not going to get that feeling again. Not of getting cut of something that I love to do. Mm -mm. That's it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can you do or have done differently already to improve your odds for this upcoming season? Um, study. Uh, I told a lot of guys, and I'm not ashamed to say this, and I say this, I say this proudly. I got exposed. <laughs> Um, growing up, uh, I would say, uh, I wasn't, uh, open to the different types of offenses or, um, I didn't really study a lot. I didn't study defenses. And when I got there, man, it was like a slap in the face. I'm like, I, the coach telling us this stuff or we learn defenses and, all the other guys, they, they know it. Some don't. But um, basically, I like every time I would answer the question, I would be kind of right or I would just be wrong. And I got exposed because I really didn't study. I didn't study the foundation of football. 
like I don't know I say foundation I don't mean like holes like two four six eight one three five seven not that type of stuff I mean like just knowing the defense and knowing the pass progression who the quarterback will start with and with um learning your coverages cover two cover zero uh zero blitz I'm talking about those kinds of things and that play in effect at the NFL league or the NFL level when you get to the NFL level it's not college all the guys are athletes but to me the big difference was I'm an athlete myself and you know thank God I, I was gifted and you know I'm not ashamed to say that I, I was gifted but I got exposed on a mental aspect and my game came slow I didn't play the game as fast as the other players did the game came slow to me so in, the, in practice I would get a lot of stuff wrong sometimes at fullback or either at tailback coach would cuss me out uh, the players uh, you know get on my head like cause what the what you doing dog like you need to get you need to get your shit together and like get here and I you know I sometimes had a history of doing that in practice and in the game I did all right I wouldn't say I did bad but there was one case in the game we played against the 49ers the game where I felt like I played a lot it was our last preseason game and I felt like I did good and I was playing with a broke rib but I don't want to use it as an excuse I played I did good, but it was one play on the goal line. All I had to do was read the D-line. But I was so – I was hyped off off jitterbugs and just trying to get into the end zone. And I felt like I could have came in with a little of more of studying. If I just would have read the defense, I could have easily scored just running to the right. But instead, I ran into the defensive people, got tackled, and didn't score a touchdown. So it lessened my chances. But other than that, I got exposed. And I would definitely say change – uh, don't rely on your talent because talent is not going to put you at this level. I don't care how you put it. If if you don't have a big name or you don't come from a big college and you think you're just going to rely on your talent, it's not going to work, buddy. Nah, everybody is doing the same thing. Faster, stronger, or just just as good. And the only way you can separate yourself if you get uh you get in touch with somebody that's uh you know that knows the game. You've been studying a lot. Like even I've been like calling out plays to him, for him to. Yeah. He's been doing good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, what is your personal reason for why you have to make it? I have a chip on my shoulder. Um, and this is another thing. I. I was kind of mad at the you know the, not the Chargers but. Um, I was just mad that they cut me, and I, you know, I felt like I put my heart out there on the field my last game. But that wasn't enough. And this is another thing. I'm mad at myself. I can't be mad at them. Ain't no reason to be mad at them. It's business. That's the level you playing at. So I had to look myself in the mirror, and you know, be done with the excuses. It's nobody else's fault but mine. I didn't give myself a chance. If I woulda, you know, been better in practice and knowing my plays and being confident in them. My game would have came faster, and everything else would have worked itself out. And so, I, you know, my competition is only myself. I don't look at anybody else. I don't compare myself to nobody else. I don't, I don't do any of those things anymore. And I really, like, I'm playing with a chip on my shoulder. I've been doing this my entire life, but now it's different. Because it took for me to get cut to realize, like, no, it's not just talent. It's you have to study to get what you want in life. You have to practice to get to what you want in life, no matter what it is. So, I'm, I don't want to talk too much, but that's, well. Yeah. Last question is, what advice do you have for any players in the same position trying to make the 46-man roster? To make the 46-man roster, pray every morning and every night before you go to bed. Secondly, study your film, study your playbook, ask for help, Stay, uh, stay stretching, stay in the recovery room to take care of your body. Don't be a hypocrite because we all can, you know, become a hypocrite or be our own worst enemy and don't know it. And lastly, I would say, <sighs> do as much as you can and be involved as much as you can and play with passion. Don't just play it just to play it, but play with passion because that door is so small 
And when I tell you, I was literally, my foot was in the door at the time with, you know, with the charges. My foot was in the door. And when they cut me, it was just, you know, it felt like my world came crashing down. And I didn't know what my next step was going to be. And so don't give the coaches, the GM, uh, anybody on that staff any doubt of them cutting you or you not being on the team. Make it known, you know, your value. You know what you did to get there. But if you have questions, man, ask. Don't be afraid to ask, man. Just because your boy's laughing and, you know, in the in the room, if somebody get a question wrong, man, that shit's serious. And I have to make that for real. It's serious because it's not funny when you get cut. All your boys and people texting you, that's that shit not funny. And I, I was hurt. I was hurt. I ain't really, you know, let nobody know for real. My parents knew, you know, some other close friends, but that was it. And I got I got two sons to feed. I don't got time to be friends with nobody afterwards. But now it's a business trip. And my whole outlook on it is completely different. You know, when I went into the thing, you know, I you know, I still felt I I was working for something because I ain't you know, I ain't getting nothing yet. But I'm in the sense of me getting exposed. I wasn't asking questions. I wasn't putting in, you know, the extra time. And sometimes I was just relying on talent or me being in the gym, working out every day to get me past. No, the game came slow and I wasn't to perform fast. And so, man, any if it can be anything that can help you out, pray, pray, pray. Make that your recipe. Pray. But as an athlete, anybody knows, you know, you got to try your best to put the right foods into your system. And you have to try to get good sleep. Um, but at the top, as far as making it on a 46-man roster, study film, ask questions, and whatever your flaws are, go on the field, go on the grass, whatever open space you have, and run the plays through your playbook. And don't be afraid to ask questions because I'm telling you, when it's time for them to cut, they're only going to go with who knows the playbook. No matter if you're the best, no matter if you're the slowest, the strongest, or the weakest, if you know your playbook, you're going to be on that team. If you don't know your playbook, you can forget it. And I can't stress that enough. I can't. <laughs> okay, so that concludes our interview. Great job. Thank you, baby. So, um, we have three questions. Are you doing three? Yeah, okay. I do. I actually. So, we have three questions from Instagram followers that we're going to let him answer. So, from Keegan. Keegan, what's up with you? We have... Um, question he asked how do you feel about there being no preseason it doesn't give you a chance to prove yourself and how does this impact you and what you would do to show your talent you answer the question in the question that you ask I can't prove myself and you're right I can't there's no preseason so my focus right now is special teams uh, the coaches tell us that all the time but my, my, my focus right now is special teams going into there um, to do everything that I can to be on that field. I don't care about anything else. I don't care if they ask me to play linebacker or offensive line. I want to be on that field. And so special teams is what I'm going to do to prove myself on the field or to make myself valuable. Okay. Thank you, Keegan. Thanks, dog. We appreciate it. Um, so from Mr. Sanders. Mr. Sanders, yeah. <laughs> He was a trainer at ODU, my dog. His first question is, what was your experience like going into training camp as an undrafted free agent? Um, It was fun. It was tiring. That's another thing a lot of guys don't know about. Going in your rookie season, man, you have so many meetings, and you still have to do the same thing the veterans do but more. And it's okay. You know, you're a rookie, so it's, it's understandable. But it's tiring, and but it was also fun. Um, I mean, we did a lot of stuff. Uh, went golfing. We went to some nice restaurants. We talked uh, with uh, 
I forgot what you call them, other team. But they, they're basically mm-hmm. like uh, a manager in a way where they kind of like control everything that's going on on the field and off the field. And um, we were basically like a tight group, all the rookies. And, we, you know, we got to talk to each other and get some insight on each other's lives. But it was fun, man. It was a lot of fun. So his second question is, what would your advice to athletes falling short on expectations of their season be? It's old. (laughs) It's old news. Uh, I would say don't remember it, but don't look back. Don't, don't, don't live in the past because who, who says it? Who says it? It's somebody that says, where did I get this quote from? (laughs) I think it might have been Gucci Mane. Oh, uh, I just wanna, uh I think it was um your trip forward if you're too busy looking backwards. And that's basically what a lot of guys do when they fall short of, you know, the season that they didn't, you know, get. Okay. So this question is non football related mm-hmm. but I feel like it's important. Yeah. It's really important. So mm-hmm. How has your life changed for you since becoming a father? My life has changed completely, <laughs> completely, completely, completely. I'm going to answer this question the best fashionable way that I can answer it. Um, I don't get any more sleep. <laughs> I don't hang out with my friends. My circle has gotten even smaller. My circle is like a dot now. Um, I, I do better at saving my money. Um, I be more mindful of what I say and what I do around my sons. Um, I'm not on social media like I used to be. Um, I take more insight to what, uh, I guess, I want to say I guess, what older people say, who've, you know, who've done what we've done. I take more insight to what they say. Everything that they will always complain about and say, it makes sense now. Um, my time is precious to me. My time is precious to me. Um, my life has changed completely, but it's been a blessing. And I wish, I don't want to say I wish I had kids when I was 16 or 18, but the, the time that I put in now is quality time. And, you know, like before, you know, I would just be chilling watching TV all the time or YouTube, Instagram. And that time I could have put extra time into, you know, studying or working out. But now, man, it's, it's, it's completely different, man. And now that I have two seeds of my own, you know, two little J's or people, you know, people that know, like when you have a kid or you have a son or a daughter, it's like a little you. And when I see them every day, man, I'm just like, this is beautiful. This is crazy. And I thank God every day. But my life has changed completely. And that's why, you know, football is just a, a platform. And I want to be able to use that platform now. I don't want to just be idle. And so, my life has changed completely, man. I don't do the things I used to do. And now I'm just trying to build on my platform and make it bigger. And, you know, spread my story. Share my story with other people. So, all I want to do is raise my sons into kings. And for them to be able to do the things that I couldn't do or the things that I was afraid to do. And the biggest thing of it all, I want them to know God. I want them to love God. And I want them to do things that I never could. I want them to be kings. And they they are going to be kings. I'm going to make sure I lead by example. And... That's a great question, man. That that I I was reading it whenever you had sent it to me, and uh, at first I was like, it's, you know, it ain't about football. But then I read it, and I'm just like, that's a great question, bro. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So <laughs> that's answer. that's the end of the video, and uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, appreciate you guys for listening. And we would just love if you guys like, comment, <laughs> and subscribe to our channel. We're going to be coming out with more and more. And we just want you guys to be a part of our journey. 
Do you want to tell them about how we're going to start giveaways? Yes. So that's another thing. You go into it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yesterday in the car. Yeah. I came up with the idea that we were going to start doing giveaways for our subscribers. So we're actually discussing what the first one is going to be. I think we're going to announce yeah. it on the video. Yeah. The next video. The next video, yeah. So just stay yeah. tuned. Stay tuned. And make sure y'all subscribe, man. If you watch this video, man, don't do us like that. Subscribe to the channel, man. We trying to, we trying to grow, share, you know, share our story. But we appreciate the love, man. We appreciate it again. Thank you guys for watching us and, you know, spreading the love. But we appreciate it. Peace.